Now, let's try to solve few of the linear equations which are not directly given in linear form. That is, we're going to see the session where we're going to reduce the equations into linear form. Sometimes it is essential. So let's take the topic of the day. It says equations reducible to linear form which are not directly in the linear form. Equations reducible to linear form is what we are going to see. So let's see how the nonlinear equations are reduced to the linear form and then solved indirectly for the nonlinear equations. Sometimes it is possible. Say for example, I take the problem 2 by x plus 3 over y equals 13 and say I take the another equation 5 over x minus 4 over y equals minus 2. So these are the two equations with the condition of course being that x and y are non-zero because if x and y being in the denominator are zeros the whole of the equations will not be defined. Therefore we have non-zero solutions for this kind of an example. But initially to start with my question is why are these two equations not linear? Let's recap with the definition of linear equations. As we have identified that linear equations are the polynomials, the linear polynomials whose powers are integral, non-negative integral powers. Clearly, I see that if I write this 2 by x as 2x inverse, then this is a negative integral power. The rule says non-negative integral power, which, which is not the case in this. Therefore, equations of this type are called non-linear equations. Of course, in two variables x and y. So let's see how we can convert these non-linear equations into linear form and then solve the linear form indirectly giving us the solutions of the given non-linear equations. So the first rule for this says that if I have my equation 1 and equation 2 respectively taken for the given problem, then for the first equation and the second equation 5 by x minus 4 over y equals negative 2, <coughs> I will let 1 by x is equal to some p and 1 by y is equal to some q is how I let the two equations. So when I take 1 by x equal to p and 1 by y equal to p implies I can write the two equations in the form 2 times 1 by x which is p. Therefore 2 by x which I can write it as 2 times of 1 by x can be substituted as p because 1 by x is assumed to be p. Therefore, this equation reduces to 2p plus similarly 3 by y can be written as 3 times of 1 by y which is q. Therefore, 3 by y can be written as 3q which equals 13 is what we get the linear form of the equations 1 and 2. Similarly, when I take the second equation Phi by x reduces to phi p <coughs> minus 4q equals minus 2. And this would give me equation 3 and equation 4. <coughs> Clearly, equation 3 and equation 4 are linear equations in two variables p and q. The variables here are assumed to be p and q. And since each of the powers of p and q are 1s, which are non-negative integral powers. Therefore, these two equations are very much linear equations in variables P and Q. So now our destination here is to solve these two equations and find the values of P and Q. The method 
of solving can be either the substitution method or the elimination method or the graphical method. Now clearly I say that substitution method would not be an easy task because the coefficients of p and q are not 1. Therefore, I try to solve this by using the elimination method, which is the most effective method of all the three methods. So in order to use the elimination method to recap with the session, we need to make one of the coefficients equal. So let me try to make the coefficients of q to be equal so that this is multiplied here and this is multiplied here and I get the coefficients equal. So let's see what equations do I get when I multiply whole of equation 3 with 4 and whole of equation 4 with 3. So 4 multiplied with 2p gives me 8p and 4 multiplied with 3q gives me 12q and 4 multiplied with 13 gives me 52 Similarly, 3 multiplied with 5p gives me 15p and 3 multiplied with 4q gives 12q and therefore 3 times of minus 2 which is minus 6 clearly makes these two coefficients equal differing by a sign which is not a restriction. Now since these two coefficients are equal differing by a sign therefore this can be eliminated or cancelled if I add so that 8p plus 15p would give me 23p in addition and this gets cancelled because 12q plus of minus 12q will just eliminate the q term is the reason why I have used the elimination method and 52 minus 6 would give me 46 and with this I get 23p equal to 46 which in turn gives me the value of p as 46 over 23 once and twice 23 times of 2 is 46 therefore I get the value of p as 2 is what I get when I substitute in elimination method now the next question here is that I have to find the value of q using the value of p so I substitute in one of the equation which is very simple therefore I substitute this in equation 4 substituting p is equal to 2 in equation 4 I get this as 5p minus 4 times of 5 times of 2 minus 4 times of q is equal to minus 2 is what is the equation obtained with p equals to 2 substituted in the equation now this is 5 times of 2 10 minus 4q is equal to minus 2 which in turn gives me minus 4q when substituted here as minus 12 is what i get out here therefore the value of q here is minus 12 over minus 4 which on Further simplification gives me the value as 3. Now I got the value of p is 2 and the value of q is 3 which I am going to substitute in the assumptions indirectly giving me the values of x and y. 1 by x equal to p so that 1 by x equal to p which is obtained as 2. Therefore this implies 1 by x is 2 which on cross multiplication gives me x equal to 1 by 2. Similarly, I have 1 by y equal to q, which on substitution of the value q as obtained gives me the value of 1 by y equals 3. That implies y equals 1 by 3. So my x is 1 by 2 and y is 1 by 3 is the required solution of the nonlinear equations in x and y. So a nonlinear equation when reduced to the linear form and then its solutions substituted in the assumption indirectly gives me the solution of the nonlinear equations. Thus the topic equations reducible to linear form is possible in this manner.